Welcome to the Osmosis Daily Report on the Coronavirus Pandemic. My name is Dr. Risha Desai. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at Osmosis. I'm also a Pediatric Infectious Disease Doctor, and I used to work at the CDC in the Division of Viral Diseases doing outbreak research. So today I want to talk about COVID-19 vaccines and where we're at with that. So to start us out, there's this great overview article on COVID-19 vaccine development, the landscape. And what was really impressive is as of April 8th, so you know a little bit uh, delayed already, but they say there are at least 115 vaccine candidates. And of course, that number is just growing. And of those, there are five that they dive into in some detail because they're, they're labeled as phase one. Now, in, in truth, some of these are already uh, you know, phase one and phase two. So uh, this is a little bit delayed, and this is the nature of doing these things, is that um, things are moving so quickly. But basically, there are these five vaccines that are furthest along. The, the lead developer of the companies involved are Moderna, uh, Cancino, Inovio, and then Shenzhen has two vaccines. We'll talk about both. So we're going to go through all five systematically and basically how they work in a very molecular way. So kind of looking at the mechanism of these vaccines and why we think that they might be effective. So let's get into the first article. This is the uh, Cancino vaccine, and it's using an adenovirus-mediated gene delivery system. What that means is basically they take DNA and they put it into little adenovirus particles and get those particles to get in and infect cells and get those cells to express that DNA. So some of the uh, comparisons of why this is so effective, nice little table in this chart, here it talks about you know the adenovirus uses double-stranded DNA, which we just mentioned. But down here under advantages, you can see you get high titers and it's extremely efficient uh, way of transducing most cell types, meaning these viruses are so good at getting into a lot of cells and then getting those cells to then produce these virus proteins that your body can then react to. This is a really nice little diagram that they show with the adenovirus here. And you can see the double-stranded DNA inside. This is DNA that we literally put in that, that really is coding for these viral proteins. That adenovirus can get into a cell in the body. So you give that adenovirus to a person, it finds cells to get into, and it gets into lots of different cells. Those cells then start to take the genes, and they're called therapy genes because the system is used for lots of different things. But same idea, it takes those genes, transcribes them, and translates them into protein, viral protein, and that protein then gets sent out to the surface. And your immune system then sees that protein and creates an immune response to it. So really, in this case, has nothing to do with the SARS-CoV-2 virus, just using the viral proteins and then getting them into cells through this adenovirus uh, vector. Okay, next up is the Moderna vaccine. This is still phase one. The cool thing about this one is using mRNA. And of course, you might be wondering, why in the other situation did you have to go through the trouble of getting it packaged in a, in a virus and then getting that virus to, to get into cells in the body? Here, it's quite different. They're taking mRNA itself, just the mRNA strand that, again, encodes viral protein. But what they're doing is they're wrapping it around a little uh, fat molecule. And so that's what you're seeing here on the far left is there's a little fatty substance around that viral uh, RNA. Uh, and then that gets into the cell. And then, of course, same idea. Once it gets into the cell, it gets transcribed and translated. And they show all the different types of proteins you can make using the system. But the core idea is, again, getting mRNA into the cell versus previously we we're talking about DNA through a virus vector. So slightly different, but, uh, but equally uh, kind of effective, at least in theory. All right, now we're on Inovio. Inovio is using a mechanism whereby they're getting DNA, this one is a phase one trial, by the way, getting DNA into cells using something called electroporation. So they have a cute little video, I muted it, but you'll just uh, watch what happens and I'll try to talk over it to explain it. They basically put in two prongs, one's positive and one's negative, and then in between, they inject in this DNA. This DNA, of course, of course, codes for the viral proteins, right? But how do you get the DNA into the cells? That's the problem. So that's is where the, the electroporation, which is these electric waves are being sent through the, the positive and negative uh, probes. And then it basically kind of shocks the cell a little bit. That's what they're visually showing here. And that lets the viral DNA uh, get in, or these DNA little plasmids get in to the cell. Once they're inside, then that cell, again, is hijacked it's forced to make viral, uh, virus protein and express it on its surface. And, and once again, you're kind of left with, at the end of the day, uh, the immune system attacking those viral proteins and creating an immune response. All right, next up, we've got Shenzhen. And Shenzhen's taking a different approach. Basically, what they're doing is they're taking a person. Uh, this is our stick person on the, on the left. 
they're taking out some cells from that person. So these are uh, basically circulating uh, immune cells, and then they're exposing those cells to a virus called the lentivirus. And the lentivirus is really good, just like the adenovirus is really good. The lentivirus is also really good at getting, uh, in this case, RNA into cells. So it kind of gets that RNA into cells, incorporates that into the cell's DNA, and then the DNA is then transcribed and translated. So these cells are now expressing proteins that you want them to express. In this case, you force them to express viral protein. Specifically, these are dendritic cells and these are cytotoxic T cells. So these two different cell lines are now forced to create viral protein and they're amazing at creating an immune response because they are antigen presenting cells. It's what they do for a living. They get back into the person, so you stick them back in. You can see these lines where they're injected back into the person, their own cells now kind of expressing viral proteins. And then those cells create a strong immune response. They literally just go right to the lymph nodes and generate this incredible immune response, and that's how they work. Now, Shenzhen has a second uh, study out there that's being done. It's also a vaccine, and in this case, instead of taking cells out of a person, engineering them, and then putting them back in, they're saying, let's just create what they're calling, essentially, artificial antigen-presenting cells. And this diagram is actually a general diagram of all the different types of AAPCs, or artificial antigen-presenting cells that are out there. Um, in this case, what they're doing is they're essentially taking cells, and they don't say exactly what kind of cell, but, um, but taking cells and forcing them to express these viral proteins, but also to express little molecules on their surface to fool the immune system into thinking that this is actually another immune cell, an antigen-presenting cell. So they're acting like antigen-presenting cells, although they're not. And so what that does is it means you don't have to take cells out of a person and then put them back in. You can just engineer these cells and then just one direction shove them into a person, and that's the vaccine. So those are five approaches. I hope you understood some of the, the differences there, but the key thing is, of course, all of them are getting viral proteins expressed so that you have an immune response. And what I think we're going to have to figure out going forward is how do we get these vaccines out, not just to uh, the full American public to get everyone vaccinated and, and safe, but of course, this is a pandemic. Every country is involved in this. How do you get these out to the world? And in, in fact, the world's neediest places are often the last to get vaccine. So there's this great paper that basically talks about that. And one of the final sentences I just wanted to highlight was they say high-level dialogue is needed on ways to ensure complementary, complementarity of efforts and global access to COVID-19 vaccines. In other words, we need to get world leaders, especially from the rich countries, together to figure out how to get access to these around the world because, of course, anyone sick anywhere means all of us are threatened everywhere. So anyway, I hope you enjoy that overview of vaccines. Bottom line, vaccine is not going to be available till 2021 by all estimates, so we still have to figure out what to do between now and then. And it's unclear if vaccine is going to be a one-time deal or if you're going to need repeat booster shots and lots of questions like that that are still open. So with that, thanks for tuning in. Hit the red subscribe button and also the bell icon to get daily updates. Check out osmosis.org slash COVID-19 for all of our free resources. And just remember, do your part to flatten the curve and raise the line. We're all in this together. Thank you.